Welcome to Truth For Our Time with your host, Tamara Scott. And good day. Thank you for joining me. I am Tamara Scott. You caught me looking down at my many notes. Our guest today is Lynn Taylor. Lynn Taylor, the Common Core Diva, one of the one of the experts we are so honored and thrilled to have come on quite often as we're in this realm of education, so much happening in Washington, D.C. How about that? Things usually don't happen, and now we have so much happening on education in Washington, D.C. We're going to have her come on and talk to us. And if you think, <clears throat> I don't have kids in school, it still impacts you. Listen up. You will not want to know the information. One, you'll probably have coworkers talking about this in the future. You have grandkids. You have uh, you know uh, other tax issues. You, you this will impact you. Trust me, it will impact you. And so you'll want to know. You'll want to have the information because there's a social agenda behind this as well. Do you know uh, with this show? One, we thank you for listening. We thank you for being a part. We thank you for your time. Time is probably the most precious commodity we have today, and yet I think we waste it so very often as well. But I thank you for spending yours with me. I am Tamara Scott, and the purpose of this show is to help you, at Truth For Our Time, bringing you information that will help you when the headlines hit home. Why? Because we want to bring God's Word in today's world, and if He expects us to live through it, even these etchy, sketchy situations we find ourselves in, in the headlines, in an uncertain, unsettled world. Uh, if he expects you to live through it, he's directed you how to do it. And so we try and come at it from that worldview here on this show, but always try and get you information and in dealing with all those issues so that you can deal with them in a secular world as well. So I thank you for staying tuned. And I need to thank our sponsors, Christians for America. Christians, the number four, America.com, the Crave Revival, Christians Reviving American Values, and I always add every day, thankful to them for their support. And if you'd like to help this show, uh, help us get our airtime, help us uh, with our message getting out, you can talk to them. They are a 501c3 and a good sponsor and friend of us, so we appreciate that very much. Also, I need to thank Webcast One Live Studio, Webcast One Live Studio, J. Michael McCoy, Max World, um, as you know him, uh, for sharing the air with us. We appreciate that very much. And of course, we're in the new studios with the 99.3. If you're local in central Iowa, you can catch this show at noon on Sundays, 99.3 FM. Very honored to be on that group uh, of of um, programs, the, the teaching that is on, at least in the morning times that I get to hear, and even sometimes in the afternoon, I don't always get to hear otherwise, but I appreciate what they share with us. And uh, very honored to be on this 99.3 FM broadcasting station. So webcast one live studios. If you want to watch us at 10 AM live on Wednesdays, and of course you can always interact uh, with the conversation. I think Lynn may have even sent it out to several of you across the nation two zero, excuse me, um, five, one, five, two, 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 four, four, zero, zero, seven, seven, five, one, five, two, four, four, zero, zero, seven, seven. You're always welcome to join in the conversation. So much happening. <clears throat> Some of you may watch the um, debate last night, and I guess we can just check with Lynn and see if she has as well. On this evening, on if you are one of those who gets the updates for the show, you were told that Mackenzie Driesen was going to be joining us, and I, I, and I do plan to have her on. She's the young lady, beautiful young lady, who is a sorority sister, or was, until she did a pro-life march, and someone decided to be offended, and they revoked her sorority status. Not even sure that that's properly gone through the procedures and even legal. She was on Max World last night. We've moved her. She's going to join us on the 30th. And we'll talk to her, have a little more time with her about that situation. And I think you need to listen to that. Because if you've got kids heading into college, you need to understand the world, the realm of higher education. And what are, and she, understand this, she had graduated. She was an alumni and they did this to her. It's just amazing to me. The political correctness, which again brings us back to the presidential debate. But I'll talk to Lynn and see if she watched it as well before I just start into that. Lynn, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Well, good morning, Ms. Tamara. How are you? I am well, and I always appreciate your time on this show. I Even more, Lynn, I appreciate all the time you give to this topic. You are constantly constantly investigating, evaluating, reviewing, reflecting, and writing about it. Thank you. Oh, you are so welcome. It is an honor to be able to have that gift and be able to share it because there is so much that the mainstream media has 
uh, just totally ignored or glossed over or spun in some way to make those who are behind all this education reform with its social agenda look like the rest of us who are showing you the truth are, you know, a lot of crackpots. You're absolutely right. Destroy the messenger if they don't agree. And yes, pump themselves up, give themselves false credibility and make themselves authorities where they're not. Absolutely. You're, you're totally right. Okay. So I want to, well, first, let's, did you watch the debate at all last night? I'm going to be honest with you. Absolutely not. My oldest came in from college and uh, she has just graduated college. And so it was her first night home and we needed to set that side of uh, that time aside for our family. So we, um, we really enjoyed that time together. And I knew there would be enough conversation going on about the debate. I know that uh, things are so instantly archived now that uh, when I can, I will go back and watch. Absolutely. And I applaud you for being the parent you need to be. And I wish all of us understood that there are some moments you can't get back. And that is one. Uh, Your time with your children is one. I missed a fairly big event myself on Monday evening because my daughter had asked me to be somewhere long ago when I wasn't. And she would totally understand if I had changed Uh my mind. But um, you are right. Our, Our kids are our future. We're raising tomorrow's leaders. And I applaud you for taking that time out to be a good parent. The debate itself... Um... You know, always interesting. I did think that CNN probably did a pretty good job in the first debate asking questions and allowing them good discussion. The first debate was really, really well done as far as the candidates answering questions, except for one. Lindsey Graham was on bad behavior last night. I don't know why, but he was just beyond spunky of norm. And and uh, but Huckabee and Santorum had some really, really great answers and, um, you know, Pataki was in that debate as well. And, and he does get what's happening in the Middle East right now because he has a son in, involved in the situation. Beyond that, I don't know that he has the understanding that Santorum and, and Huckabee seem to have as far as the worldview behind it. Um, the, the second debate, um, there was a little bit different tone. Someone else noticed this, not myself. Someone else noticed this. CNN, we don't, we don't look at CNN for fairness. We don't look at CNN for conservative values. And yet in both debates, one, they sang God bless America. The second one, they sang, uh, this is Dar Spangled Banner. All of our candidates had their heart hand on their hearts, but that doesn't surprise us with the Republican party, though we don't see that in the other party. But someone said that Wolf Blitzer ended it with Merry Christmas. I did not see that. I, I don't know if I was busy tweeting or whatever. I did. I missed that, but think that through folks. And then this particular commentator gave Donald Trump credit for that. Trump has truly blown political correctness out of the water. I I asked him a question at an event not too long ago, and I said, you have freed Americans from the bondage of political correctness. And if nothing else in this election, I am thrilled that he has done that. I think the excitement you see, the energy you see, are people feeling released to be able to discuss about issues that have concerned them greatly for some time that they haven't been able to share. So, okay, Lynn, um, let's get right to this. We've got um, we've got you here until about 1140, excuse me, 45 past the hour, if that's okay with you. And uh-huh. you, Lynn, uh, Lynn has given us a great list of resources and stories, and I've already posted those on TamaraScott.com. TamaraScott.com, just go to the TFOT show of today's date, and that is, um, <laughs> today's date is 12 16, 15, and you'll find all those resources there. So, Lynn, do you want to start with point one, or do you not want to start with point eight? It's up to you. <laughs> okay, first of all, I hope you got my last minute links, because in reviewing everything, I thought I had been nice and thorough yesterday, and since you all nine of the links, and then I looked, and point number three and point number eight were missing. So I sent those to you prior to the broadcast. So be sure if you don't already have those, because those particular topics are going to be huge for um, our listeners, because point, well, let me just run down the points real quick, and maybe your listeners will understand why each of these points um, are, are very, very important, and any information they can get on these particular points, because I know for each of us, 
we're in this educational battle for different reasons. We're not always going to have the same situation or the same topic that's going to interest us, okay? So the first topic that I have on the links for you is the reaction to the Senate. And I didn't so much give you a personal reaction as I gave you tools of what you needed to look for since the Senate was the the final one who cast votes before it hit the president's desk. And this is referring to the Every Student Succeeds Act, or the S-1177, which was formerly known as the Every Child Achieves Act. Um, The second topic, of course, was the uh, response to the House vote. And again, more resources and tools for what we can be looking for with this legislation that will now be um, enacted in each of our states. Uh, Then we have the social-emotional learning component. That's going to be a huge makeover in education. And it's not just going to be public education, or it's not going to be just K-12 through education either. And this is one of the things that the mainstream media has really tried to put a lid on. Uh, Then our next topic is how the ESSA, or that Every Student Succeeds Act, ties to the HEA, or the Higher Education Act, and that particular bill is going to be up for reauthorization very, very soon as well. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me to see that happen early in 2016, and uh, we can talk about why that's going to be a big thing on our radar, especially if we have students in higher education. Um, We see that uh, Common Core is in there as well. Then we have some of the new names for Common Core standards because we know that uh, not only has the, as I call it, the Common Core machine put a new spin on what Common Core is, but we see the uh, laws and the legislators uh, realizing that the moniker Common Core standards has so much uh, toxicity to it that they're staring away from it. Of course, with the new ESSA as well, you're going to see a big push into pre-K, which will be uh, a huge concern for those with little ones. Uh, Then we have also with ESSA the global readiness and how that can tie into the UNESCO, the Agenda 21, the United Nations. We have special needs who are going to be impacted as well as home education, private education. And then the last topic that I have for you in all these resources is the White House agenda that is pushing a lot of this instead of the, as we were told, the state and local level. Okay, Miss Lynn. I know I have areas of interest here, but let's start. Let's just sure. go through it. Um, let's, okay. Let's start with point one. Okay. What we need to know about the Senate, hang on just a second. I had all my tabs nice and organized. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate you sending all those to me, and I did get point eight. I got the link added to point eight. I don't know if I saw the one on point three, so I'll go back and look for that, and I'll get it to that's, you. Listeners. Yeah, that's okay. That is the social-emotional learning, and that is one that is absolutely um Oh, my gosh, that one's huge, my dear, because you're going to see a lot of the psychometric testing uh, or assessments. Um, Now, I know that there are other anti-common core warriors who have also devoted much of their research to the social-emotional learning. My specialty in research is going to be towards the uh, parts of the common core or whatever new name you want to stick on it to where it's previously not had the light shown, uh, shined on it um, or shown on it, and that would be like your higher education or the special needs, the homeschoolers, that sort of thing. But what I wanted to point out to you after this Senate vote, because if you have been following this education reform push, you're going to know that with their vote, they were the ones who allowed this ESSA to s- sail through. I have very little confidence that most of the senators, if any of them, read it. Uh, We know the House of Representatives more than likely didn't because they got it two days before they voted on it. And it was how many pages? It's over 1,000 pages. I think that last count I got it was like 1,061. But um, I know in, I think it is in the last article that I wrote that I uh, linked to you, that would have followed the timeline um, in reaction to the vote. I actually embedded the entire document because I know there are many, many citizens who are now, and this is one of those things we can be thankful for uh, with all this education reform. We have citizen soldiers now, Tamara, who are doing things they've never done before. They're being active. They're um, 
speaking up. They're taking huge pieces of legislation. Okay, Lynn, hang face. on. We've got to come back. We've got a commercial coming in. We'll be right back with okay. Lynn Taylor, and we'll get into the social uh, engineering as well. Stay tuned. Truth for Our Time, webcast one line, 99.3 FM. Be right back. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcastonelive.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to Truth For Our Time with your host, Tamara Scott. And good day. Thank you for listening. For those of us, who, those of you who are listening, 10 a.m. live on Wednesday, Webcast One Live Studio, otherwise 99.3 FM on Sunday. So we thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the comments that we're hearing when we run into you out locally. Appreciate the feedback. I am with Lynn Taylor. Lynn Taylor is a Common Core diva. We're going to head right back into this as she takes us through what we've just had happen. The education bills have passed. Lynn, let me just clarify. We keep hearing we're now done with Common Core. This bill takes away Common Core. This bill returns local control, state control, and removes federal overreach, and we've gotten rid of Common Core. Well, that's absolutely false. <laughs> that is some of the spin that was created uh, first by uh, Senator Lamar Alexander. Um, and it has grown and grown, and you have everyone. If you go back and you listen to the, uh, the, the supposed debate that was in the Senate, and you listen to the groups that were thanked by both Senator Alexander and Senator Murray, you've got a great... Uh, tool right there of which groups are are working to help reform America. And I can give you the page number where you can find it when you go back and look through this uh, law for yourself. 
it's on pages 38 and 39 that you're going to see the chain of command. And supposedly, oh, yes, my state will now have control of our education. But what was not told was that those states must submit not to uh, the local levels of of education, but to the federal level, i.e. the Secretary of Education with the U.S. Department of Education, they're going to now have to submit their education plans, and that Secretary of Education will be the one who says yay or nay. So, so much for local control. Thank you. What about getting rid of the uh, state standards or the Common Core state standards? They're re- they're being rebranded. If you look at the language in this particular new ESSA, which supposedly did away with Common Core, you won't find any Common Core state standards because, as I've said previously, there's such a toxic aura around that particular brand name. But those who are behind this education reform have gotten really shifty. You're going to either see college and career readiness, career tech education, you're going to see global readiness, future ready, or challenging uh, state academic standards, or CSAS is what I'm calling it. It's um, challenging academic, uh, uh, challenging state academic standards. And, and just for a tongue-in-cheek thing, and I'm going to give you a laugh for just a minute, when the ESSA was being uh, bannered about and finally was voted into law, I was really upset, but trying to be, you know, a positive motivator out there. I'm, you know, writing these articles telling here, you know, here's what you need to look for, blah, 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 blah. And I just, I don't know, there was something when I looked at the ESSA, I thought, well, they're saying it's Every Student Succeeds Act. And I looked and I thought, no, it's the erroneous, socialistic, streamlined agenda. And so that was my little tongue in cheek of what the ESSA actually stands for. And and sadly, it is more true than, than fun. So um, what I want to point out real quick about the reaction with the Senate is because the very same day that that uh, ESSA was being signed into law, the Council of Chief State School Officers, which we know owns half of the copyright to the Common Core State Standards or these career college readiness and that sort of thing, they released a new tool that if you have educators who are listening, they're going to need to know, or you have school superintendents, they need to know this. There's going to be a new set of professional standards for educational leaders that they have just uh, introduced, and they've worked in conjunction with another group who is so tied to, uh, again, ties back to Common Core. So that was the main point that I wanted to bring up today with the reaction to this Senate. Now, with the reaction um, article that I wrote after the House, the big things we need to take away from there, as we see this uh, ESSA enacted, you're going to see a huge, huge increase in the number of P3s, or those public-private partnerships, who are now going to be involved in education, everything from designing lessons to training educators. And it's kind of like if we were going to, you, as I, uh, you and I as speakers, if we were going to go in and suddenly start working on cars and telling them how to fix cars, we would be so out of our league because we don't know that much about it. it it's so here again, you have that argument of, Overreach, And again, it was embedded in that ESSA of more public-private partnership, more third-party uh, data mining, more third-party uh, money going into education. And that's fine and well to a point, but if I have got a non-educated agenda that I want embedded in my school, I now have the legality to do it. So that was after the Senate. Now, I know you said that um, you really wanted to look at that social, emotional. Let me get I, to I that. I do, but I want to touch on this plan, this sure. uh, public-private partnership. I mean, we're talking back in the early part of 2000. I was yeah. doing interviews with Tom DeWeese. Um, right. And I'm trying to think what group he's with right now. Uh, mm-hmm. He would warn us then about public-private partnerships being dangerous. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, is, it is not a good—your public sector needs to remain separate from your private sector. A couple reasons, folks. When you get into the public sector, they should not be making money or competing with those in the private sector who do. This is a way of the government choosing winners versus losers, and your taxpayers will now be supporting some of your private enterprises. So it's just not a good play. It sounds good, Lynn, to have partnerships. We In our local communities, we want the businesses to come in and support the public school 
schools or help with this event or have an, a hold sponsor an event. That's different from what we're talking about. Well, absolutely. And here's the thing. If you look at how embedded with uh, the Gates Foundation that the U.S. Department of Commerce is and look at the follow the money trail from the U.S. Um, level of the Chamber of Commerce, they come down to the state levels of commerce. The, uh, then they impact the funding for the local chambers of commerce. And what are chambers of commerce? They're all about business and business needs uh, workers and workers need education. And one of the, the, the things that just irks me so much about these public-private partnerships, if you go back and you look at your state laws, the only business that a, uh, or the only actions that a private business were supposed to have with the education infrastructure was helping to build the school, not run the school. But we've had so many laws passed that that has been absolutely just thrown out, kind of like the baby with the bathwater. And you now have, look at your, uh, look at your business uh, organizations throughout the nation. How many of them have said, oh, yes, we support all this education reform because, after all, we don't have a skilled workforce. If you look at the correct numbers, not the number of those who are unemployed, but those who are employed, you're going to see there are plenty of jobs, but for some reason they're not being filled. And I can introduce you to a whole generation of kids who want to work, who want jobs, and they're not being hired because there's some stupid set of agenda points out there that they don't quite measure up to. Yeah, and for those of you listening, understand, we under, when she says the business community wants workers, workers need educated, we, th- we think, well, yes, we want all of our workers educated, but what, what we're saying here is that they are, they are engineered. They're not educated. They're engineered to fill various vocations that educate that business and 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 and, and um, the um, the business industry needs filled. So if you've got Johnny in school and Johnny may end up being a great um, engineer or have a mathematical skill or have the gift of music where he really could be blessed and have actually a career in music because he's blessing so many people with his music. Th- what this does, it will never give him a shot at any of those things. It will edge him if they decide down a path where they need workers. Is that correct, Lynn? Yes, and it will be done through assessments. And I have written uh, uh, several research articles, as have others, of how these, and this is where we kind of morph over into the social-emotional. They're taking these assessments that are going to assess things that we should never have assessed in a in a school, I don't care what kind of educational choice it is, because, again, this total agenda behind it is not let's let Johnny or Susie be all they can be and, and live to their full potential. We're going to mold them. We're going to tell them what to think, how to think, how to operate, what career they should go down, and we're going to mold everything to them, and it's going to be done through supposedly individualized lessons or personal learning or student-led learning or problem or, or project-based learning all these lead up to this um, and this is another thing that can tie back to this workforce agenda that our business community is is now on on the bandwagon with the federal government over and that is is that I have someone who's trained to do only what I want and and it, it's just heinous. And and we see what's happening is if you know anything about those twenty first uh, century learning community centers, this is turning up the heat. This is laying the foundation to get those in motion. And with the passage of the ESSA, it now has given legality to make those things that were starting to happen to lay the foundation to now be firmly built upon. So your schools will be reinvented to be where they're like a one-stop shop for any kind of service that would be connected to education. Um, And that's, again, mental health. That's that social-emotional learning. And um, as has been pointed out by several other researchers, when we start altering the way that our children think, and that is what has been proven by many psychologists with these aligned standards, we're literally altering their brain. And that is criminal. So, folks, I want you to listen to this. We're trying to get through all of this today, Lynn, but thank you. You've already agreed to come back if we need to have you on. 
Folks, when we hear individualized learning plan, we, we know that there are some students who have those who have learning disabilities or whatever, and it may sound like a great idea for everyone. Everyone learns differently. We get that. But that's not what we're talking about. Again, it's not what we're talking about here. They will be putting kids on a track we decide is appropriate for that child. And Lynn, because of the data we know they're collecting, it may not, most likely will not be on that child's academic skills and certainly on their giftings that are outside those that can be tested on a piece of paper or in a computer with standardized test. If, if a child has skills off the charts in those areas, they will not be taken into account. What this does, it will... It, Lynn, it just makes so much more sense. Back in the day, the one-room schoolhouse, one teacher, multiple grades, but they taught kids how to learn, not what to learn. They taught kids how to read, not not a limited scope of what they could or could not read. And we had kids coming out. This, you know, our greatest generation, we had innovation, we had creation. Now, this individualized learning, you're going to be narrowing the scope of what a student learns according to what somebody else has deemed important. And most of it will be done over a computer. And if you look at the studies that are done about how much time children, and I don't care what age they are, spend in front of a computer, it's a bad thing, but especially if it's a special needs student. Now, I've written several articles about how Common Core is aligning to IEPs. I've caught a lot of flack for it. I've been told I don't know what I'm talking about. But if you go back and you look at the documents, which is something that I always include in every article that I write, I don't tell you how to think or what to think. We get enough of that. I give you information to use as tools. If there's a document out there that will back it up, you can bet that it will be embedded in those articles. But I want to point... Okay, to wait essay. for your next point because you've got to go to break okay. again. So okay. hang on to that next point. But people understand... That individualized learning plan keeps everyone isolated and how they engineer your child where they've got your child directed you'll never know you'll not be able to compare them with the other kids except for the standardized testing we'll come back to that Tamara Scott Truth For Our Time 99.3 FM and webcast one live with Lynn Taylor stay tuned from the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios this is webcast one live I'm Brian owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us. 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed right or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu and some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a 
very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're going to make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Welcome back to Truth For Our Time with your host, Tamara Scott. And thanks for staying tuned. I am Tamara Scott, Truth For Our Time. Guest is Lynn Taylor. We're talking about your children, my children, your grandchildren, my grandchildren, and tomorrow's leaders and our country's future. Think this through. Think this through. They will be designing what your child will be. Lynn was telling me off break that Aspire, Work Key, some of those career assessment programs start in third grade. This is so dangerous. I just don't know how to tell you. The thing we celebrate in America is we're looking at this presidential election and you've got a Rubio who's telling you my dad was a bartender and uh, my mom was a waitress and you have other, you know, Jendal who, whose parents came here from another country and were, were doing whatever they could to give their kids a better opportunity. This puts in place the caste system that we had somehow avoided in this nation. And when I'm telling you the individualized learning programs, you, it will make it difficult to know uh, that your child, what track they're being sent down. And I'm sorry, Lynn, maybe I'm, I'm wrong in this, but I don't trust the school to be honest with me. Well, absolutely. And, and here's the thing. We've got puppets um, in place in, in key positions. And, you know, as I've written before, we've got a White House initiative that's pushing for school counselors to be talking uh, puppets for this particular kind of career pathway, this this agenda. And one of the things that's so scary is that our school counselors are supposed to be there to to help talk us through things or, or to listen to us or to point out what's best for us, not to be a walking advertisement for some sort of educational reform. Uh, as I just shared with you, you were, we just got new educational leadership professional standards that have just been released. We've got tons of, of pro-education uh, reform groups out there who are pushing all the stuff they can possibly come up with that will just, this uh, case system that, that we're seeing the foundations laid for. And now with the, the ESSA's passage into law, the, the, the go-ahead to make every bit of this ramp up, we're seeing it just bloom right before our eyes. But one of the things I wanted to, to bring up with the social emotional skills, I don't know if you know of this organization or not, but it's called the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. And we need to watch in every education level for their five uh, goals. And that is where they're going to put in a lot of this social justice that we're seeing happen in a lot of our education plans. Self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, responsible decision-making. And I'm going to leave that um, for folks to go back and look at the article and they can go more in depth to that because I know we have a little bit more we want to bring up. And that, folks, is on TamaraScott.com. It's on the link, the the, uh, story, the the TFOT with 12, 16, 15 with Lynn Taylor, and it's point number four. If you go to point number four, you'll see that. Okay, Lynn, go ahead. Awesome. Well, one of the things that I think, the well, it's not I think, I know the mainstream media has not um, really advertised, is how the ESSA will be one of the links in the chain that was started by WIOA. And what I mean by that is, if you go back to 2014, we had a huge bill that was signed into law known as WIO, and that stands for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. I listened to the webinar where we had the U.S. Department of Education, the U.S. Department of Labor, and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And the representative who was speaking from the U.S. Department of Labor mentioned that there were 21 different instances in that legislation that purposely embedded the career pathways. And 
And I've done enough research into the career pathways that I can tell you, as sure as I'm sitting here, Tamara, that is the adult version of the Common Core state standards or these going to be these new college career readiness standards that start in either elementary school or secondary school and are absolutely carried over into post-secondary education. So we've got a law now that has laid the foundation, embedded Common Core in 21 different ways. We've just seen the ESSA pass, which now impacts K-12 through education. But if you look at the language in the law, we're going to see a huge push for mandatory preschool now. So now instead of K-12, through it's going to be preschool through 12. And the last link that will need to be passed to make this case system a done deal, my dear, is when the reauthorization for the Higher Education Act is um, is brought up. And if you look at the people who are rewriting that particular reauthorization, you're going to see the same people who were behind the ESSA. That should scare everyone, and I hate that it's so close to Christmas to be talking about this serious of a subject, but we've got to. And when do we think that reauthorization of the Higher Education Act will come? You know, uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see early 2016, because I think with the same people who are behind what they are calling the success of the passage of the ESSA, they're going to want to strike with the iron's hot, so to speak, because a lot of this is being rushed so that it can happen under the current administration. We had asked those of us who who were asking for, please read the bill, take the time to, if we're going to do education reform, let's do it right. Let's do this in a time-honoring, student-honoring, education-honoring way. And it was totally ignored. So that, if you go back and you look at the current White House agenda, which that is um, also going to be embedded in the links that you're sharing with others, you're going to see a lot of this push, Tamara, is not from the cabinet level of the government. It's not from the state level of government or the local. It's coming directly from the White House. Well, that should alarm all of us directly from the White House. Again, not just because this is an administration that gives me great heartburn and concern, but because anytime you have that kind of power and influence coming from one area, our founders gave us checks and balances for a reason, the um, the different branches for a reason, and and these types of situations, anything that impacts the body politic, the the body, the the large masses needs to come through the congressional area, not the White House or the courts. So pushing it directly through the White House, are, are you seeing influence there? Are you seeing where this is coming from? Well, absolutely. I mean, um, I know on one of the last articles that I wrote, I shared with you, this is all part of what's known as the I-3, which stands for innovation, investing in innovation. And I can't remember what the other one was, but I mean, you can find all this stuff out. But I know we have to close up, but I want to leave folks with this. Uh, the, The ESSA, and I did my own research into this. The ESSA also ties back to that WIOA legislation. So uh, since it impacts pre-K through 12, we're going to see it start to, to really show up, not once, not twice, but over 168 times. It's going to impact Title I funding, Title IV funding, Title IX funding, Perkins funding, which is used for post-secondary education. Your state education funding formulas will now be totally redone. It's just we have so much more to talk about, Tamara. I will have to have Henry Berg back on as well to talk about what cost this is going to be for the states, implementing all of these new things. A couple of things, Lynn. First off, my next guest isn't here yet, so I hope if you can stay on, we can keep going for a little bit until they, okay. he, he's here. He's here. I just hadn't seen him. Awesome. He's here. Awesome. Um, but I have a quick question for you, and we do have to go to break. Yeah. We have just a minute left. Um, and where was my question? Oh, it may have <laughs> it may have me at this point uh oh, well. it was in the earlier um uh with these bills oh are you familiar at all with the uh education delivery institute i believe so yes yeah. mm-hmm. okay there yeah all right, so I'm watching the clock. We're going to have to come back to that one. But, folks, when I did the search on that, all I could find was medical positions. 
employment for medical positions, this is coming through your school. So to me, it, it gives me concern that this is where the clinics that are going to come in place that Hillary Clinton wanted uh-huh. back in the 90s. So, um, Lynn, we are going to let you go, but we will have okay. you back. Folks can find you at Common Core Diva, Common Core Diva dot blog. Is it blogspot? No, it's uh, Common Core Diva dot WordPress dot com. Common Core Diva dot WordPress dot com. Stay tuned. I'll be t- we'll be right back. Tamara Scott, Truth for Our Time, and Woodcast One Live Studios, ninety nine point three FM. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Barrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcastonelive.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to Truth For Our Time with your host, Tamara Scott. This is Tamara Scott. Thank you for staying tuned with us. Thank you for your time every day, every Sunday when you listen on 99.3 at noon or Wednesdays at 10 a.m. live. We thank you for, for, for tuning in. We don't give you fluff. Now, there are days that we might try and encourage you. We don't just give you fluff and fill an hour because one time is too precious. There's a war going on out there, and there's a war after your children. The Bible's very clear. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I would tell you as a great avenue right now in the public school system. And you heard Lynn. It will be coming down in the pre-K area as well. And now in the higher education area as well. It's been bad enough. You've seen it. The K through college. Kids coming out of college more liberal than when you sent them as parents. Coming back as somebody different than who you sent to college. And that is often the influence of what we call liberal professors. But here's the thing as well. Some of those professors may not be so liberal, but they are under a very strict code of what they can and cannot say on these campuses anymore. They are no longer the area for free idea, free ideas and free exchanges. And of course, our, our guest, Mackenzie Driesen was going to talk about that. The fact that one, she's actually out of the school. She's an alumni. She's a, a professional. And because of something she posted on Facebook, a pro-life lobby she attended, something so nasty as the hashtag all lives matter. And she was deemed, I think, a racist. And her sorority status was revoked. Even after school, they have fingers where they can come now grab you. And so this is, I think, this is why we're seeing such energy in this campaign. No matter who you like, no matter who you don't like, uh, uh, Donald Trump, careless, clumsy, cold-hearted sometimes when he speaks, is allowing free discussion to take place. He is taking away the, 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 the bondage of political correctness and allowing people to speak freely. I think they just feel released to be able to say those things that concern them, whether it's a terrorist attack in San Bernardino, California, where someone saw something that was concerned and didn't say anything because they didn't want to be ridiculed because we saw how it worked for the kids with the, with the clock. The boy and the clock 
Uh, he gets invited to the White House, and now he's suing those who were brave enough to say something. Think that through. Um, and as well, when they tell you to, to, if you see something, say something, honestly, we're going to make people turn on each other because our government hasn't done its job of keeping those who are dangerous out of this country. Think that through. To me, it goes back to the days of the KGB and those stories we've heard, the stories I've talked to from people who've made it through World War II out of Poland who didn't trust their neighbors because they knew the authorities would come through and say, give us something on your neighbors or we take your son. That's what I see in this see something, say something. Don't ask citizens to do what the, those who have been charged with the authority to do are refusing. Absolutely refusing. So the debate is good. I ask you to continue the debate here in Iowa, especially when you talk to the candidates across the country, no matter where you're at. Be writing letters to their campaigns asking about this education situation, this indoctrination that is now being implemented and funded by you against your will and will not help your child learn or soar, but will help plug them into a vocational avenue that someone else has deemed appropriate. It's just dangerous all around. Joining me now is Dave Davis, and he was here for just a little bit last week's show, and he's kind enough to drop a by for a little bit this week's show. Welcome, Dave Davison. Good to see you. I was told there would be cookies here, so I'll be here next week again to check. Nobody I'm told sorry. you there'd be cookies here, but I do like to bake cookies, but nobody told you. Oh, there was cookies here last week. I just like Christmas cookies, but uh, you know, the Chris, there's, a, there's a force Tamara, coming this weekend and going throughout the Christmas season. Have you heard about this awakening force? No. Awake, the force awakens. Is this the it's Star Wars thing? It's not just Star Wars. It's the Christmas spirit. It happens every year. I like I'm just that. saying. I like that. So I appreciated you coming on. We're offering our listeners, Truth For Our Time listeners, a special little gift. If they are online, they can go to... Givebooksaway.com. Or this title that you're giving away. It's like your Christmas card. Your picture is in the foreword. The name of the book is Secrets of the Christmas Spirit. Secrets of the Christmas Spirit. And so secretsofthechristmasspirit.com will take you to the same book. And it's a free download. So many times we see things that are free and it's like you're trying to sell something else and try to sell nutrition or something or a weight loss program. It has nothing to do with anything. You are just giving this book away. I've been on a 17-year book tour on this book. I took about... 16 years off. <laughs> it came out in 1998, a book my brother and I wrote that because you wrote. Because we talked about the fragrance of Christmas, so this is yeah, a totally This is an book. excerpt from this book, Fragrance okay. of Christmas, which was like a gift book back okay. in the last millennium. But the neat thing about this book is it's got the word Christmas as an acronym. And so like T is for tradition, right? M is for music. These are things that kind of are recipes that build up the Christmas spirit. There's a point for me every Christmas season, Tamara, that I get the the Christmas spirit. I just kind of like something hits my heart and it's usually maybe a trigger from my childhood or maybe right. putting an ornament or right. seeing a child Christmas open a present. Christmas is so nostalgic. And I think that the Christmas spirit has a lot to do with the Holy Spirit. I think it's the Holy Spirit finally catching our attention, saying, hey, God loves you. Here's this uh, great gift in the person of Jesus Christ. And we finally have enough time to sit there after eating Christmas cookies being with our family, we finally get to soak it in and kind of just realize the abundance that God gives us each year. Oh, all the time, but we recognize it at this time of the year. So they can go to? Givebooksaway.com. And the neat thing about it is, so you download it for yourself for free, and you're, you're prompted to tweet it or put it on Facebook so you can give this same resource back out to your social media constituency. You know, uh, that's the neat thing about it. We're, we're kind of experimenting something with your listeners. Like, hey, take this book for yourself and give it away. It's, it's Tamara Scott approved, folks. It's free. I haven't it's Christmas read this time. book. I've got to read this one. The Fragrance of Christmas is the one that I had read. So I've It's basically read. the same book without the recipes. I know you like recipes, but we didn't go the recipe route. It's an excerpt because, yeah, we've written uh, the original publisher. Yeah, we've written like it's, six or seven books with it's them. It's my and, kind yeah. gift through you with your help to yeah. our listeners who just, it's what I liked about the book, it, it, the one that I had read was quick. It's just little, <laughs> it's this little scripture verses. It's just little yeah. memories. It's things that just jog those traditional and uh, nostalgic. And there is a spirit of Christmas. You're absolutely right. There's a spirit of Christmas. So we just want you to be blessed by that and enjoy it. And, and 
read it, pass it along as David yes. says, send the link. Let's do that. Let's just do that. Let's blanket America and the globe with some happy, blessed Christmas spirit this year. It's one of those quick, easy things you can do to give somebody else a lift. If you can kind of press a button a couple of times, you press it down one for download, and, then you, and it actually writes the tweet out for you. And I'll put you the don't link, have to write anything. You just go click, 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 click. I will put the link on TamaraScott.com. David will give me the link, and he will help me put the it's link. Givebooksaway.com. It's not like I have to give you the link again. I'm not holding back anything. <laughs> I've I've come clean with it. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank you so much for your time. We thank you for listening a bit. What David is saying is right. We're coming down to the last two weeks of Christmas, and it's so easy to get caught in the hustle and bustle. And my husband will we'll start our Christmas shopping about the 21st. That's when we usually do. But And I don't even have a tree up. This is so strange for me. I don't even have a tree. Well, I challenge your listeners, Tamara, before they watch the Star Wars movie, which is kind of a neat thing, you know, 38 years seconds. later. Okay. I challenge them to check this book out before they watch the movie. That's all I'm saying. And even better, try checking this book out. What is that? Holly Bibble? What is, <laughs> this is that this thing? Is, this is my big old Bible. And try reading Luke 2. Just try reading Luke 2. We've got to go. We're out of time. But I hope you have a blessed week. And be encouraged. Never be complacent. <laughs>